Okay, so in the previous video, in the last episode, I showed that in polar coordinates, this is the uh, acceleration vector in polar coordinates. Uh, so I'll link that down below and you can watch that derivation. So let's use that for the motion of a pendulum. So here I have a mass suspended by a string and, and attached to some point up here that swings back and forth like that. I want to describe the motion. Let me go ahead and say, this seems like a common problem, the, the mass on a string, a pendulum. And it's in introductory physics textbooks, but it's actually super, super complicated. With that said, let's get started. So I'm going to start by drawing the forces. Remember, I still want to use this. I still want to use Newton's second law, F net equals MA. But I'm going to describe the vectors in terms of their uh, unit vector in the r direction, which would be this way. I don't want to mess with That's r direction. And theta hat is this way, the direction. No, theta hat's this way, the direction of increasing theta. I guess I should put that there. So at that instant, r hat, theta hat. And what makes the polar unit vector coordinate, the polar vector, the polar coordinate unit vectors complicated is that they aren't constant in direction. They can change depending on the position, unlike Cartesian coordinates. And so you think, so why would you do it? It makes it, it, makes it pointless. It doesn't make it pointless, and here's why. So here are the forces on this mass. I have the gravitational force, mg, and then I have the tension. I'll draw it a little thicker, t. So let's write down, uh, let's break this into an the R component of force and the Y component and the theta component of force. So F net R, it's a scalar now. So what forces are in the in the R direction? Well, I have the tension, and that actually should be negative because it's in the negative R direction. So I have negative T. It's all in the R direction. Now the gravitational force is not right. Here, this angle is theta, if that angle is theta. So I need to find this component of the, gra of the gravitational force. So that would be plus mg cosine theta. Now, this is going to be equal to mass times my acceleration in the r direction, which is this. So I'm going to say r double dot, which is the second derivative of r with respect to position, minus 2 no, minus r theta dot squared. Now we can make a couple of simplifications here because if I know at this instant the value of r is l, it's the length of that string, and as it moves over here, it's still l. So the derivative of l with respect to time, the derivative of r with respect to time is zero. So I can actually write this as negative t plus mg cosine theta equals m. Now the second derivative of r with respect to time is zero. So I have negative l theta dot squared. And that is my equation for the r direction. Now that is fine. It, the, really the only thing this is going to be useful for is to find the value of the tension. If I know the, uh, the angular velocity, I could find the value of the tension. But I honestly don't super care um, about that right now. So let's look at F net theta. Let's do the same thing for the theta direction. So there's a, the tension does not act in the theta direction, only a part of the gravitational force. So I'm looking for that component of the gravitational force. That way is positive theta. This is acting in the negative theta direction. So it's going to be negative mg sine of theta. And according to this, it's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration in the theta direction, which is this, 2 r dot theta dot plus 2 plus r theta double dot. Again, the derivative of r with respect to time is 0. So I get negative mg sine theta equals m, and the value of r is l, m l theta double dot. Uh, the masses cancel, so I'm going to solve this for theta dot, theta double dot. Theta double dot is equal to 
negative g over l sine theta. Okay, so that's my solution right there as a differential equation. Uh, it's not the super easiest to solve. I'm actually going to solve this uh, with Python. But first, I'm going to get an approximate answer that I can easily solve. So, if I say, let me rewrite that over here, theta double dot equals negative g over l sine theta. If theta is um, close to zero, how do you put that? Much less than one or approximately zero? How do you put close in? Let's just put much less than one. That's not really how to do it. So if I have small theta, then sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. So just look right here. Here's sine theta as a function of theta. And it looks like this. But right there, it's like a straight line. Sine theta equals theta. So if I do that, I get theta double dot equals negative g over l theta. And here's where you might say, oh, that's like acceleration is equal to negative of the position which we have for a simple harmonic motion. So this is approximate to that. Now one way to solve that is to just guess the solution. So let me guess a theta as a function of t equals the following function. And if it works, it works. a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t. So if I take the derivative of that, theta dot of the respect to t, I get the derivative of this, which is going to be negative a omega sine omega t. Right, so I had to take the derivative of cosine to get sine, but I take the derivative of the stuff inside with respect to t, and that's where I get that omega. And then over here I get plus b omega cosine omega t. Now let's do it again. Theta double dot is a function of t. I get negative a omega squared, because I need I take the derivative of the sine again, I get cosine, I take the derivative of the inside and I get omega. So I get cosine omega t. And then this one's going to be minus b omega squared sine omega t. And this is equal to negative omega squared times a cosine omega t plus b omega sine omega t, which is equal to negative omega squared theta. So that does work. A and B are just some constants, and omega has to be equal to the square root of G over L. That's important. Uh, so really, we can also get a really big thing here. It's since omega is the angular velocity, the angular frequency, I could say the period would be 1, 2 pi over omega, so that would be 2 pi square root of L over G. So I can check this, right? If I mo make a model using my other equation, if theta is small, I should get this period. That's something I'll check. Uh, let's go ahead and find the value for a and b. The value for a and b depend on my initial conditions. So let's say theta as a function of 0 at time 0 is theta 0. And let's say theta dot as a function at a time of 0 is equal to 0. So if that's the case up here, I can say the following. Theta of 0 equals a cosine omega t. So if I put in t of 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So this would be a plus b times sine of 0, which is 0. Wait, is that right? Sine of 0 is 0. That's right. So this means that uh, if this is equal to 0, then a has to be equal to 0. That doesn't seem right. I think I got that backwards. I feel like I got that backwards, but I'm going to proceed. And then I do the same thing, theta dot of 0. Oh, no, this is theta 0. That's why. <laughs> so that means that a equals theta 0. I was right. See, sometimes you just got to stop and think for a second. Theta dot of 0 is 0. So that means that uh, I get, I put in again, theta, here's theta dot. I get uh, at t equals 0, this is 0. And this is 1. So the only way for that to be 0 is for uh, b to be equal to 0. That means 
theta as a function of t equals theta zero cosine omega t. Okay, so I have solved that for small angles. I want to now solve that for all angles without making this approximation that sine theta is approximately equal to theta. So let me just go ahead and tell you how I'm going to do that. And I wasn't prepared, I didn't have enough paper. So let me start with this, I'm gonna do it in Python. Let me start with this function right here. Theta double dot equals negative G over L sine theta. So how do we solve this differential equation numerically? So if I consider this as uh, theta double dot, I can calculate that. So let's say I have my pendulum right here and I know theta. If I know theta, I can calculate theta double dot, period. Okay. So once I calculate that, that's step one. Step two, I'm going to calculate, I'm going to say theta dot equals theta dot two equals theta dot one plus theta double dot delta t. So I'm going to take a short time interval, delta t. And since if we define theta double dot as delta theta dot over delta t, then theta 2 dot equals theta 1 dot plus theta double dot delta t. I can do that. So I'm going to calculate theta double dot. I'm going to use that to update my theta dot, my angular velocity. Now I do have to start with a known value of both theta and theta dot. I can do that, I already said what they were, okay? Theta dot at zero equals zero, theta at zero equals theta zero. Now with this, I can do the same thing. Theta dot is delta theta over delta t. So I can write that as theta two equals theta one plus theta dot delta t to solve them for uh, this delta theta is theta two minus theta one. I get that. So I'm going to go over here. Theta two equals theta one plus this theta dot, theta two dot, delta t. And then I'm going to say t two equals t one plus delta t. So this is a lie. This is true. This is not completely true. This assumes delta t is small, and during that time, delta uh, theta double dot is constant, which it's not. But if delta t is small enough, it's going to work. And the same thing's true down here. And this is uh, the Euler method. It's not the best, but it works. And that's what we're going to use. So I don't want to break this motion into a hundred small problems. Instead, I'm going to do it and do it per, do it on, on hand. Instead, I'm going to do it in a calc, in a, with Python. I'm going to put this in Python, and I'm going to do that over there which that's where my computer is. So I'll meet you over there at my computer and we'll do this. So here I am in Python. Let's just enter some initial values. So G equals 9.8. I'm going to, I'm not, I'm not going to display anything. I'm just going to uh, calculate. So I'm using the scalar value of G. Uh, I need my initial angle. So let's say theta equals, um, let's say it's seven degrees. I just picked that randomly seven times pi divided by 180 to convert that into radians. Uh, I do need theta dot, so let's call that d theta equals zero. I need time, t equals zero. I need the time step, dt equals 0 0.01. I do need a graph. I'm going to need a graph. So we're going to plot theta as a function of time. So let's say uh, t graph equals graph. Uh, x title, no, x, x title equals uh, time. y title equals theta uh, in radians, because it doesn't really matter. Mm, yeah, let's do that. And then I'm going to need a, something to plot. F1, dot, F1 equals g curve, color equals color dot blue. OK, we're, we're good to go. So let's say, uh, y, let's run this for, mm, oh wait, ah, ha, ha. I need the length. L equals, I'll use one, because one meter, it should take a second to oscillate. I know that. Uh, so let's say while T is less than five. And what was the first step? Do you remember? I do. It was calculate theta double dot. So I can say DD theta, the DD is for double dot, uh, theta equals, 
I'm just writing this down negative g times sine of theta divided by L. That was straight from my equation. Now I need to update theta, dub, theta dot. So I can say d theta equals d theta plus double dot theta times dt. Now I need to update theta. So theta equals theta plus d theta times dt. Update time. t equals t plus dt and then plot it. f1 dot plot t theta. Will it work? I don't know. Will it crash? I don't know. Will I find out? Yes. Here we go. Run. Oh, boom. Check that out. Now, uh, let's go down here and say, remember I, I said the period t is equal to 2 times pi times the square root of L over G. That's what I said, right? Yeah. So print period equals T seconds. Uh, so this is around two second. So it's one second to go across once. And that's this. I knew that because one of the original definitions for the meter was uh, how a pendulum, the length of a pendulum that took a second to swing across. And so right over here, that's the pe that's the theoretical period. If I go from here to one complete oscillation, I get the same thing, approximately. You can change the thing. And this is, uh, you could plot a cosine function and show the same thing. Everything's cool, okay? We're all cool. Okay, that's for a small angle. Let's do a non-small angle, 37 degrees. Where did I get that number from? I just made it up. Okay. Now you'll notice the theoretical period would be two seconds, but you'll notice it's not two seconds. Okay, it's a little off. Let's do even huger, 77 degrees. Okay, so then now you can see it's, it's getting off more. And this isn't even actually, I don't think, a, trig, a, a cosine function. It looks like one, but it's not. Uh, what if I did even like, a 90 degree angle. This still works. Okay, how about this? Let's do one more graph. Uh, I, I'll probably make, a, make another video where I make an animation of this pendulum because I think that's useful, but I don't want to get into it right now. But I do want to plot, let's plot uh, the, the path of this, the xy coordinates. Okay, so if I go down here, I could say x equals l times sine of theta, right? Because remember the way I have my theta drawn from the y-axis. Uh, and then y would be equal to negative L, L times cosine theta. So now I can plot x versus y. I think this will work. There you go. Now it doesn't look, it is a circle, it's a half circle. It doesn't look like that because this goes from zero to negative 2.1. 1.2 and this isn't scaled the same but there that does work and I think that's good enough for now I think things are working um, it's pretty cool uh, different equations Python numerical calculations and acceleration polar coordinates the end okay bye